Trying to order an operator repeater system is a bit of a headache. You'll find yourself going up against a barrage of questions on how do you want to set it up. The result is many clubs just end up not bothering with it. So we thought, how can we make this process simpler to understand? Hi, I'm Tanner with Bridgecom Systems, and today I'm going to share with you the five most crucial things you need to know before operating your repeater system. Number one, band of operation. Before you even begin your process of ordering a repeater, you need to know the frequency your system will operate on. We will focus on three standard frequency bands, 2 meter, 1.25 meter, and 70 centimeter for today's video. These are the most common bands repeaters operate on. To choose which frequency to go with, we recommend listening to radio chatter in your area. You can also go to repeaterbook.com and look up repeaters in their directory. If you're part of a club, then we recommend getting together with each other to come to an agreement on the frequency band you want to install. Number two, input frequency, output frequency. When your repeater is in operation, it will receive signals on one frequency and retransmit that frequency into another one. The frequency it receives is called the input frequency, and the frequency it retransmits is called the output frequency. These frequencies are most commonly called offset or TXRRX. Frequency coordinators keep extensive records of repeater input, output, and control frequencies. Typically, UHF frequencies have a separation of 5 mHz with TX lower than RX. VHF frequencies have a break of 600 kHz with no standard for low and high sides. There are many different sides with these coordinators on them, so we recommend coordinating with them so you can give us a valid TX RX. Number three, analog versus digital. When choosing a repeater, you need to know what mode you want to use. Your two options are digital and analog. The main difference you'll notice between these modes is signal quality. This difference is by far the most crucial distinction between the two modes. In an analog repeater, the receiver voice filters and sends to the transmitter via FM and or AM modules. This form of transmission means you'll likely hear noise in the communication. In the digital repeater, the baseband processor converts into patterns of numbers or digits, which removes signal imperfections first and then sends it to the transmitter. Only when the signal becomes too weak, whether uplink or downlink, does your call drop. There's a link down below where we cover the specific differences between digital and analog. Number four, efficient antenna and duplexer. When you're installing your system, you need to make sure that you have the proper antenna installed with it. The antenna is where the signal comes in and out. Depending on your system setup, you'll have one to two antennas. As always, you'll want to install your antenna as high as possible to help with the line of sight. If you have a duplexer, only one antenna is required. If not, two are needed. One for transmit and one for receive. With this being the case, we recommend using a duplexer. The advantage of using only one antenna saves money, but also is quite helpful on congested tower sites. Here at Bridgecom, we have a premium set of antenna options for any system that we'll link below. Number five, the site and coverage testing. The last step before installing a repeater is a site survey and radio coverage test. This test is critical to having a repeater system that performs well. Again, maintaining a clear line of sight is the best way to ensure your repeater operates according to your settings. Just think this, the more things break in your repeater's line of view, the less range you'll have. Surveying the area will help you save loads of time and money in the process of installing your repeater. Once you've surveyed the site area, you need to test the coverage. A coverage test will require you to take radios to your preset site location and test how they perform with the settings you'll have in your repeater. This test will remove any error when installing your system. Every communication system is different, but if you know these five steps, you'll be in a better position to install your repeater system. So are you looking to upgrade your ham club with your very own repeater? Fill out the form below and we'll schedule a time with you to get you or your club on the air with a new system. Thanks again for watching. I'm Tanner with BridgeConf Systems and as always, 7-3.